Hello and welcome to a very special interview with the President of the Congress Party in Rajasthan, Sachin Pilot for The Wire.in. Three days ago, the Vasundra Raja Sindhya government in Rajasthan was forced to refer its criminal law amendment bill to a select committee in the Vidhan Sabha for a comprehensive review. And many people believe this has effectively killed the bill. So does the credit go to the Congress Party? Is the party now in a position to defeat Vasundra Raja Sindhya in the elections due next year? And what about Rahul Gandhi? Does he have the wind in his sails, or is this just a moment of euphoric exaggeration? With me to answer those questions is Sachin Pilot himself. Sachin Pilot, let's start with Rajasthan. After extensive protests by politicians, journalists, and activists, Vasundha Raja Sindhya has been forced to refer her bill to a select committee, and many people believe there the criminal law amendment bill will effectively die, or at least be put in cold storage. Do you believe that is the case or do you think this is still only a half measure? I think it's a half measure because what she's done now is face saving because of this huge universal opposition to this bill uh, and we aggressively fought for the values that we believed in. Uh, the two parts of this bill, Karan, I think we must uh, you know, shed light on that. One is that this is giving a legal protection to all the netas and babus. Um, for all the corruption that they may have done and it also is applicable for ex-babus. So you could have been in a position so you get le legal security and framework security for a long time. So once you're a babu, whether serving or retired, you are protected, you are protected. because you need sanction. Protected to the point that you need a government sanction and government can wait up to six months before giving a sanction. And the second thing is of course the media is gagged the because it can't report and it can't name. The second part is even more controversial because it says that you can't name a person, put his, his or her photograph in any media, social media, electronic media, print media. So it's pretty much actually the government will decide who can be charge sheeted, who can be called corrupt or not called corrupt. So this is effectively really, I think, uh, hitting at the basic tenets of our democracy, which we protested against. And I'm happy that they have actually referred it. But to my mind, referring it is uh, not enough. They must withdraw the bill in totality because that's what uh, we require to be well, done. Well, let me pick you up on that point because you're not just saying the bill must be withdrawn. In effect, what this means is you want Vasundha Raja Sindhya, the chief minister, to stand up and admit she's made a mistake. Now, given that she has over three-fourths majority in the Vidhan Sabha, she's not going to do that. So you're asking right. for something which is perhaps exaggerated because she won't humiliate right. herself. Karan, it's not about personal humiliation. This is a state. It's run through democratic norms. You get a majority not to write laws that are going to protect the corrupt politicians. It's the government's there to make law for the benefit of the people. And by the way, there's an ordinance in place which in effect today in the state of Rajasthan, the same gag order is applicable. But that ordinance will lapse in 40 days because the bill has now been referred and Correct. if the bill doesn't get passed, the ordinance lapses. So, so today it's a matter of 40 days only. Yeah, but what? So today in that state, the same law is applicable. So the same rule is, uh, is applicable. So one must not forget that it's not just about committing a mistake. It's about rectifying it effectively and admitting, yes, it's a problem and we'll sort it out. The fact that the chief minister, first of all, why does she have the urgency to make such a law? She must explain well, to the well, people of Rajasthan. Well, let's come to that in a moment's time. Because beyond wanting the bill withdrawn, you've also taken a second step. Mm -hmm. You've also gone as president of the Congress party to the Rajasthan High Court. Yes. Now, before you did that, there were already two PILs and a writ petition. Why did you feel a need to add to that? Why is that not sufficient? Why go to court as well? We went to court because the government was being very stubborn. They w agreed to refer the bill to the select committee, but they did not withdraw the ordinance because the ordinance is illegal. Article 14, Article 19 of our constitution are uh, against what the bill stands for. So I think it's illegal. It's inappropriate, immoral and unconstitutional. So, That's you why the court so you've gone to court we've gone to, to get court. the ordinance struck down yes. in the first instance? We didn't go to the court for the bill. That's the uh, that, See, the bill is the property of the House, but the ordinance was passed by the Cabinet and we have told the court that the ordinance itself is illegal and the court must strike it down. And the court ha today has actually issued notices to the government regarding this ordinance. In the meantime, one of the very interesting things, and perhaps this is a bit perplexing about the ordinance, is that it was actually signed by Governor Kalyan Singh on the 6th of September. But the world only found out about it on the 21st of October when the Indian Express revealed its existence on the front page. Which means that for roughly six weeks, no one knew about the existence of this ordinance. No, I think they, they've done a, bit, a, a tricky game with this. So the ordinance was signed and it says public servant. That's right. 
but when they defined public servant in the bill that was put in the assembly, then they included everybody from sarpanch to MLAs, MPs, ministers, uh, politicians, Babu. So the so definition they widened it exactly, and that was a tricky part because public servant refers usually to uh, you know uh, government officers above a certain rank, but when you define public servant and include politicians, uh, MLAs and MPs and ministers, it shows that the intent is to give a legal safeguard to politicians who are doing corruption. What about your other point? When the bill happened as a replacement of the ordinance, did they also at that point add in former retired civil servants and public servants? Yes, they've, they've expanded the definition of public servant to include almost anybody. This is very interesting, but come back to the ordinance. The point I'm making about the ordinance is that it was signed by the governor on the 6th of September, but only revealed when the Indian Express revealed it to the world on the 21st of October, which means for six weeks, we didn't know the ordinance existed. Does that suggest to you? that in fact there was an attempt by the BJP government to keep it under wraps, perhaps even to hide it from the public? Could be. I think they have operated with stealth on many occasions. So I wouldn't be surprised if this was done in the same context. Now, this fiasco, and I'm using that word deliberately, is a great setback for the BJP. And conversely, it is a gain for the opponents of the BJP. But the question is, who does the credit go to? To Congress, because you're the opposition? to journalists because they revealed something that no one knew about or to activists because they actually staged protests that put the government under pressure. I think the victory is of democratic forces. It's not about the Congress and the BJP. There is a state and there are citizens. When you violate the rights of citizens as a state doing it, we have to oppose it. So it's a victory of democratic forces. We are a political party. It's our right, duty and responsibility to act against any such actions. We acted against the government in the assembly. We protested. We were on the streets. I think the pressure mounted and finally the chief minister relented. But half-heartedly, I think the stubbornness still left in that uh, position. Well, you're calling it victory, but at the same time, you're saying she only relented half-heartedly. And I want to pick you up on that point. You're now demanding a full withdrawal. She's only referred it to a select committee. People are saying that the referral amounts to the bill being put in cold storage. Suppose she doesn't fully withdraw. After all, as I said, she has a three-fourths majority. She can withstand any degree of opposition on the floor of the Vidhan Sabha. What then? If she doesn't fully withdraw, what happens? Uh, Karan, the state and the country are run not just merely on numbers, but also on some ethos and some functionality that has to be legal. Now, we've approached the courts to getting justice for uh, against this ordinance. But that's on the ordinance. Yes, but in the bill, that's why I said the chief minister should have actually withdrawn the bill as opposed to referring it. I think it's a face-saving exercise because she didn't want to seem like she'd done a grave mistake. But that face-saving is not sufficient for you. You're not at insisting all. she withdraw and in demanding she withdraw, you're also insisting she humiliate herself. And I'm asking you, it's what not if about she individuals. refuses? What it's if she refuses? We will go to any length to make sure that such a law does not uh, uh, take place in Rajasthan. When you've, gone, when, you, when you've gone to the court, We've that gone I to the court, yes. To what length will you go within the Vidhan Sabha to ensure a complete withdrawal as opposed to a referral to the select committee? You see, I think you're making it individual based, which is not what I want no, to do. No, not you. I'm making or, or it Congress versus minister. BJP. Exactly. So we are a political party. We are fighting tooth and nail politically, legally. At every step, we will challenge her uh, intent to make alive this bill one more time. But if she does can that, you challenge we her? can challenge her. But Trust you've got me. 21 seats versus 163. You know, it doesn't matter. So 21, 24 MLAs of ours in the assembly have forced her to withdraw the bill. By the way, within the assembly, there are no activists, there are no NGOs, there's no media. It is the MLAs who stand there and force the government to so withdraw. So the real credit you're saying is the Congress MLAs? I'm not here to take credit. All I'm saying is that it is the political opposition as a principal opposition party. We made sure that the ruling dispensation does not do as it wants. There is a sense of arrogance in the ruling party today in the BJP and I think the Chief Minister finally took that step because the Congress party vociferously uh, acted against that law uh, in Parliament on the streets and we left no stone unturned. I was arrested, all of us were taken to the police station because we were protesting. So I think it's not about taking credit but we must fight for what is right. Alright, let's not say it's a question of taking credit but let's say it's a question of accepting the fact that it was on the floor of the Assembly that the government was forced to have to refer the matter and on the floor of the Assembly there are no activists, as you said, it is only Congress and other opposition MLAs. Let's build on that point then. You've scored a significant victory, even though it's not a full withdrawal as yet, but it's a significant victory. Can you now from this position actually unseat Vasundra and defeat the BJP in the elections which are now just a year away? Or is that one step too far? Well, I don't want to sound... Uh overconfident, but I can tell you with all my experience in the last four years working in the state as party president, it's not just about this 
really, really awful bill that she wanted to make into law. It's also about the governance in the last four years. If you look at the data, Karan, in all of India, Rajasthan ranks number one again for crimes against uh, scheduled tribes. We are number two in atrocities against Dalits. We are number three for the number of rapes that happen in all of India. And these numbers are not mine. This is the Home Ministry, Government of India's numbers. Uh, and being a woman chief minister, having third highest number of rapes in Rajasthan shows you the lack of governance. You know, it's all okay to get these, majority. These are issues that you're going to exploit to Ma ensure you defeat her next year. It's not about exploiting. It's about letting people know what the facts are. It's okay to have propaganda, to have a lot of resources, to build on media you know, uh, campaigns. But on the ground, farmers are committing suicide. Joblessness is at its peak people are she does have a farmer waiver in proposal it may not have been implemented I but she's announced it and that could ameliorate many of the distresses that farmers feel yes, that could bring I've them over this for last two years we've been protesting we had farmers rallies all across i did a padhyatra of 100 kilometers for getting a farm loan waiver my point is if the chief minister of up and the chief minister of maharashtra can give farm loan waivers what crimes have the farmers of rajasthan done to not get that farm in other loan words waiver? announcing a farm waiver is not sufficient she has to act on it and because she hasn't act on it you believe you can swing farmers votes behind you oh she's made some committees she's studying other states how they've done it i think it's all i wash we forced her in the assembly our mlas sat for two days and two nights on the floor of the house to demand that farm loan waiver announcement what about the fact that yesterday that is to say on thursday pasunda raje passed on a bill increasing the reservations for obcs and as a result total reservations are now over 50 percent the bill may be challenged in court arguably it could be struck down but that's another matter the bill has given a very clear message to the Gujars who have been demanding reservations now for over 10 years that was sundar raje Karan. is going out of her way to help them Please this by the way the is history. the second or third attempt she's made look the at the message history. look at the her support the people are not going to take these false messages we all want every community to get adequate space and representation. But the fact is, when you do the same law that was passed by the assembly, three times it's been struck down. Three times. Forget about what I'm saying. It's the BJP. But look at her persistence. This. She's now done it for a fourth but time. But do it right. Why keep doing it the wrong way just to give a message but not actually have on the ground? If you really want to benefit those communities, you find a legal solution which will not be challenged in court. But she believes that actually she's done it right because previously when it was struck down, it was struck down on the basis that there was no scientific argument for expanding the reservations for the Gujars and other OBCs. Now she's no. had a commission go into it. The commission Karan. report has recommended it. Let she believes this will all, now go through. Karanji, entire assembly has 200 members. Every single member has supported each time the bill has come to the floor of the house. It's not a political issue at all now. The point is, if the government has the intent, they will find a legal solution to do this because we all know the writing on the wall. And you're saying she hasn't made an effort to find it? Or are you saying there's you no legal the bill, solution? If you read the bill, if the BJP MLAs themselves are saying this is eyewash. Forget about what I'm saying. In other words, this bill is not a proper bill because it hasn't made that extra effort to find a proper legal solution. You're saying, I hope, it, you're saying I there hope is a legal solution, but she hasn't found it. I think, Karan, I am hopeful that it will pass through legal scrutiny. But past experience has shown us that it probably won't be. And that, I think, is a problem not just for her and her government, but for the state. Because time and again, you're raising expectations, passing you know, infectious bills, and get struck down by the court let for the fourth time now. Let, let me come back to the key question I actually began this with, which is, do you believe you're in a position to defeat Vasundar Raja in the elections, which are now just a year away? You pointed to distress, you've pointed to false promises, you've pointed to farmers waivers that have been announced but not implemented, you pointed to bad governance. Therefore, you have, you believe, many reasons why people will turn against her. These are reasons that Congress will make people aware of. No, I th I'm making two points. One is the point that you listed. I will go, my party is going to go to the people of Rajasthan, not with the uh, faults of the ruling dispensation, but I want to go to the people of Rajasthan with the vision that the Congress party has for Rajasthan and we will give a very broad and very specific ideas of what we will deliver for the government. It's not about a negative pop campaign. In other we want to do an optimistic, positive campaign. You will also be talking what about deliver. what you will be promising and Our what you vision, will be doing. Congress Party's vision of Rajasthan, and I think a better governance alternative is what the Congress Party will offer. But let me tell you the problem. And the problem is a very simple mathematical one. In 2013, she won 163 seats, which is over 80% of the Vadhan Sabha. Your party won 21, which is just marginally over 10%. For you to now get a majority from that base, you have to win practically 500 times more seats. That's an enormous demand. No matter how unpopular she may be, no matter how brilliantly you may campaign, no matter what promises she's left unfulfilled, for Congress to increase its tally by almost 500% is so difficult, it's almost impossible. That's why I say to you, 
can you really win next year? I don't year? think the numbers intimidate me as much as intimidate you. Because I have worked there for four years and not just me, all our leaders in Rajasthan are singularly focused on reviving the Congress party. I'll give you a data point because you're talking about statistics now. In 2014, when the BJP and Congress fought Lok Sabha elections, the BJP polled 56% votes. Congress party polled 30%. The difference was 26%. A year later, we had the Panchayat elections. Congress party was up 45% and the BJP down to 46%. So the gap was 1%. There have been five by-elections so far in Rajasthan. We have won three, they have won two. They have the brute majority of government of India, and Rajasthan government and all the resources and yet we keep winning by-elections, municipal elections and to my mind it's not just about the numbers that you feel are so uh, impossible to achieve. It's a sentiment, the public mood and the acceptance of the Congress party in the hearts and minds of our voters. I'm absolutely confident in 12 months time when you and I talk again, we will have a Congress government okay, in Rajasthan. You may be right, time alone will tell but let me raise a second problem that the Congress party in Rajasthan face and this time it's to do with your own continuation as president of the party in Rajasthan. People in Delhi are saying that when the Alvaro Ajmer by-election is held, Sachin Pilot will be a candidate, undoubtedly he will win and he'll be moved to Delhi. <laughs> so the question is, will you be there next year to fight the elections in the state as president of the Congress party? I have been now in the Congress in politics for 17 years current. And every time my party has given me a task, I have performed it with full, uh, you know, uh, diligence. I have been... Can, can I interrupt? I'm not questioning your diligence. Yes. I'm questioning whether the party will take away the task just before the elections. Will they appoint someone else? Because that's the speculation which you know about. You see, Karan, we all work within the party structure. And whatever job I've been given, I'm doing it to the best of my capacities. I believe we have 12 months left for the elections. Uh, we are working as a team. Whatever position I may be or may not be, the Congress party stands to win and that's my responsibility today as Congress president to see us go through that line. Now, you're making assumptions about who's going to fight, who will be party president. I don't, we don't really, you know, worry all much about that. The Congress party is one strong entity. I'm one worker of it, right? And there are hundreds like me, that is perhaps a, thousands. That is a very astute answer and I grant you that there's probably none other that you can give me. But let me put it like this. Alwar and Ajmer by-elections will yes. be announced probably in weeks, maybe at the most in a month or so. If you end up as a candidate for one of those seats, does that mean that you will cease to be Rajasthan Congress president? Is that the first sign that they're going to replace you and bring someone else? Why must you have such a negative attitude? We have a by-election that's important for us to win. Whether the Congress party puts me as a candidate or somebody else, we have to win that seat. And that's a singular focus in my mind today to win those by-elections. Can you be an MP in the Lok Sabha and Congress president in Rajasthan at the same time? There have been many instances, but like I said, who will be the candidate finally will be decided by the All India Congress committee and not by somebody in Rajasthan. I'll tell you why I'm pursuing this point, and I don't mean to be hurtful, but mm. I am being blunt. Because again, you know this better than me. Your party in Delhi has been debating, not today, but for several weeks and months, whether you are the right <coughs> face against the Sudra in the elections next year or whether it should be Ashok Ghanot. You're young, you're energetic, you're close to Rahul. But he's a two-time MP, he's very experienced, and at the moment he seems to be making all the right moves in Gujarat. What can you say or do to convince the party that the mood is with you, you represent youth, you represent the future, Gelo is the past? How can you Karan, my job is to convince the voters of Rajasthan. And if you don't convince your party, you won't be in a position to convince the voters. It doesn't matter. I think all of us have a collective objective to defeat the BJP. And I think any leader in Rajasthan will agree with this. When elections happen and we win those elections, the MLAs and the Congress party will decide who will head the party at that point. It's not important. I've got enough from the party. So is Mr. Kalot, Mr. C.P. Joshi. It's very strange that if you aren't president when the elections happen, that the MLAs will still choose you as chief minister. Because that's like bringing you back through a different route. It doesn't matter who they choose. We must get a majority. That's everyone's attention and focus today. And that's what the Congress leaders in Rajasthan are wa wanting and working towards. One last question on this before I change subjects and come to Rahul Gandhi. This speculation that Ashok Gehlot could replace you just before the election is peculiar, if not perplexing, for two reasons. At the moment, all over the world, young leaders are coming to the forefront. It's happened in Canada, it's happened in France, it's happened in Ireland, right? It's happened in Austria, where a 31-year-old has taken over. Your party is toying, perhaps more than just toying, with bringing Rahul Gandhi to the forefront. He's a new generation of leader. And yet, if they bring Ashok Gehlot to replace you in Rajasthan, what message will be they be sending? Suddenly, whilst you're going younger and younger and younger, in Rajasthan, you're going backwards in age. Why are you so... Uh 
keen upon forecasting what the party might do because everyone's talking about it people can talk let's no party is talking let's about it let's see what decision the party makes we have organization elections going on right now and within a month we'll have a new president in almost all the states and we'll have a new president of the AICC so let's just wait and see how the party decides to put people in different positions and i can tell you whether it's me or mr cp joshi or ashok gelot ji everyone has been given a CP task cp joshi is another possible candidate we, yes we've all been given tasks to do by the way i think the party is strong today karan not just because of me because everyone has put collective efforts to make the party strong and that's why we are here today and a better alternative to the bjp not because of one four my, my, five my, leaders my but because everybody question, worked together my last question on this subject are you confident that you will be the president of congress in rajasthan when the state elections are held next year i am confident the congress party win those elections next year that's very what clever my answer is. but not an answer to my question but a very clever answer okay let's come at this point to rahul gandhi has a date been set when rahul gandhi will take over as party president or is the best answer you can give me it will happen soon but no date is known because i think it's a very simple thing it's not that complicated we have to finish the elections of our party uh, before the month of december uh the elections of the delegates in the states has already happened we've all passed resolutions we have to now just figure out the election scheduling for the post of president of, of the congress party which the cwc will decide i think in a matter of days we'll have a schedule and then you know people will file nominations and we'll have a new president in a matter of days we'll have a schedule but literally 27 days ago speaking to pti on the 1st of october you said and i'm quoting you the new president could take over shortly after diwali yes. now 8 9 days have virtually gone by since diwali we have no idea when the new president will take over suddenly your failure to set a concrete date is creating doubt in people's minds not Doesn't at all there I is no doubt and please don't create any the the election schedule has already been announced the election to the president it's a matter of days about you know when you file nomination when you withdraw it's it's a exercise of uh, the congress party in house it's not some external exercise i tell you and i think the time is going to be i said diwali because it is somebody asked me is it before or after diwali i said after diwali because that's how the schedule said so we'll see in a few days time just have patience about the announcements it is going to happen very soon i'll tell you why people are doubtful it's because last year roughly at this time there was a lot of excitement speculation and talk that rahul gandhi was going to take over no date was set and the whole matter fizzled out now a year later we seem to be back in the same position congress is talking about rahul taking over rahul no doubt is performing a little better but again no date is set and people ask will it once again fizzle out there's no fizzling out and let me explain to you the congress party postponed its elections by a year it's not about mr gandhi himself the entire machinery was postponed by a year because we wanted more time and the election is an internal exercise and mr gandhi's uh, elevation to the president's post must happen through an election that's what he wants as opposed to just being announced by the working committee which is a fair point so when the elections get postponed by a year it's not just the aicc president it's But why can't the elections everybody. be held immediately why are you delaying they have been conducted but you've had They a whole year to august. prepare for it it's not that simple you don't know the exercise it's a humongous undertaking it started in august and it takes at least 5 to 6 months to finish elections in 30 states you know block district right. panchayat state it goes on and on but i think now the uh, culmination of that election process is is almost done and we'll have announcements to the election of the president very very soon all right let's assume that rahul gandhi will be the new president of the congress party whether that happens in a month a week or a year the key question and it's one that hangs like a sort of democracy's over his head is his image i accept that after his visit to berkeley i accept that after his recent trips to gujarat i accept after his rather witty tweets that have attracted attention his profile is higher but many if not the majority of india still think of him as pappu and pappu is not in his case a term of endearment in his case pappu is a clear sign they don't think he's got the qualities to be prime minister people don't elect pappus as prime ministers please don't demean the people of our country by saying that they use those words that word is being particularly used by the bjp and its hired hacks who sit on computers Hasn't all day long has it caught on it's something that's been propagated by the bjp and we believe in politics of decorum and decency we've never called people names and that's not what we do as as congress party idea is to talk about principles issues and our politics and governance not about individual character assassination which the bjp has perfected the art of and i believe today let the bjp answer on core issues of the economy the gst and the money ban as opposed to talking about individual leaders and trying to allege things on the i accept that the term pappu was created by the bjp but it now has spread across not just the social media it's become part of common people's parlance and talk but leave that aside what the term pappu denotes is the concern about three things that a this young gentleman 
may not have the talent to be a successful politician. He hasn't shown it so far. Number two, he's not a great public speaker. Public speaking is an essential quality in a successful politician. Number three, he's not dedicated. He's not persistent. He often takes a break and disappears. Now, how are you going to change those qualities, that image? Because unless that image changes, people are going to be reluctant. No matter how witty, no matter how clever his SMSs and tweets may be, Unless people are convinced he's got what it takes to be PM, they won't vote for him. So, Karan, you can be critical as you want to be, uh, but the people of India decide and look at leadership, what kind of ideas you bring to the table and what your philosophy in life is, what your, st what your, what your stand on political issues is. Um, one can always aspire for different things and different leaderships. But I think what Mr. Gandhi is doing is opening up the systems of our Congress party and making sure that we are able to be a fighting force. And I can tell you today, the national party that can challenge the BJP, pan-India, remains the Congress party. So every like-minded party may come along, but to challenge the BJP in 2019, the Congress party has to lead from the front. And you've seen the kind of support Mr. Gandhi is getting, not just in Gujarat, in other parts of India. And you will see when, when people will vote and they will deliver uh, what we expect them to deliver, you will change those attitudes also. If I understand your answer correctly, not just this, but the earlier one as well, you're hoping, you're in fact banking on the fact that the election in 2019 will be about issues and policies. As it should be. The election in 2014 was a personality clash between Modi versus Rahul Gandhi and everyone says Modi won it hands down. How are you going to ensure that that doesn't replicate itself in 2019, that in 2019 it is about policies, it is about GST, it is about demonetization, it is about farmers' loan waivers and all the other promises that Mr. Modi hasn't fulfilled, like the creation of jobs. How would you ensure that? Because Mr. Modi might do again what he did in 2014 and make it a personality fight. You see, in 2014, uh, Dr. Manmohan Singh was the Prime Minister of India and the election was fought on false promises. Four years, three and a half years down t today, people are asking those same questions. I don't think it's that is simple for Mr. Modi to 2019 to get up and say, well, vote for me one more time because I'm going to promise X, Y, and Z. He has to answer and be accountable to the promises he made in 2014. Uh, big ideas, a lot of promises, jobs, uh, you know, uh, corruption, uh, inflation, black money, so on and so forth. The delivery has been... Absolutely. So, so you're confident, I am so you're confident, confident 2019 will be on policies, on Modi performance, it has to be the economy, not on personality. The economy is in a mess. Jobs aren't being created. Our, um, every fundamental economic indicator is, is not looking healthy as it should be. So to my mind, questions will be asked. And I think, I think the people of India are smart enough to realize that slogans and propaganda is just not enough. Okay. They've got to see delivery. The first test that the policy issues you intend to raise in 2019 will be affected is going to be, in fact, the outcome of the elections in Himachal and Gujarat. Let's take Himachal first. The polls suggest that BJP could win something like 47 seats out of 68, which is a two-thirds majority. Congress could slip to just 21. If that extreme prediction turns out to be correct, you're finished. That will clearly show that the policies, the issues, the economy, the joblessness isn't working. Every state has a different narrative. And Himachal Pradesh, I think the opinion polls today to base our judgments on what one media report has said about opinion polls is actually incorrect. Let the elections happen. In Gujarat, um, no matter what opinion polls suggest, the groundswell of opposition against the BJP now is historic. It's never been like this before. Different social groups are getting together to, to ease out the BJP from the problem its with those party. different social groups is that they have clashes with each other as well. Alpesh Thakur is a rival of Hardik ha Pandya. Patel, my apologies. You must right? understand, they, are, they are not. They are not Please. necessarily collaborators. They are rivals. You're trying to bring together people who have disparate constituencies, different interests, different appeals, and they may clash rather than cohere. No, I think you've been... Uh, read the signs very clearly. The difference anyone may have may be marginal, but the main objective is to dethrone the BJP from Gujarat. And that's a collective objective of everybody who is in the opposition. And those anti-BJP forces are coming together like never before. I can tell you, with the Congress being so robust and, and active on the ground and these forces coming together, the BJP will have to work very hard to get anywhere close to half mark majority. And I'm confident the Congress party will form the government there. Well, let me try and puncture that confidence because you began by saying that these forces are coming together, that the BJP will de be dethroned. And the forces you're talking about are Alpesh Thakur. And you're hoping that people like Hardik Patel and Jignesh Vevani will also support you in some sense. But once again, look at two polls, not just one, which have come out in the last 36, 48 hours. They give BJP, in both cases, 
a majority greater than it got in 2012. And secondly, and perhaps from your point of view more worrying, look at the vote share. According to India Today, there's a 10% gap between BJP and Congress. According to Times Now, there's a 15% gap. Those are huge no, gaps. Listen. First of all, right now, the candidates haven't been declared. We don't know what the social configurations will be in each constituency. Um, and to have an opinion poll 45 days before polling day, uh, I don't think people make up their minds that early uh, in time. So, like I said, time will tell. Let's not jump to conclusions. But from what I've seen, what I've heard in Gujarat, the reports that we get from the ground on the Gujarat is that the Congress party is in a very strong position to form a government there. Well, time always will tell. But it's that strong position that you claim Congress is in that I'm questioning. A, Mr. Modi will be campaigning as never before in Gujarat. He's not just the sitting prime minister. He's probably the most popular electoral campaigner in the country today. B, Amit Shah is regarded as perhaps the cleverest, most astute election strategist. He'll be virtually camping in Gujarat. In contrast, your party doesn't even have a Gujarati face so these to These guys up. didn't, didn't you campaign don't even in have Bihar? A, you don't even they, have a Gujarati did face. Mr. Did Mr. Shah and Mr. Modi not campaign in Bihar? Did they not do the astute strategizing in Delhi? So to say that B BJP can't be defeated is such an exaggeration. But it was a Mahagathbandhan in Bihar that defeated the BJP. Where is that are, Gathbandhan there, in Gujarat? There are many Gathbandhans happening at many levels in Gujarat. You will see the Shankar anti Singh BJP Singh has just walked away from your party. He's taken MLAs with him. Instead of forming a Gathbandhan, you're splintering. Not at all. I think someone who's done this uh, needs to answer for himself. But I'm telling you, at many levels, the forces against the BJP coming together. And that's why, you see, the election... Sachin, can I point out no, one thing? You don't even have a Gujarati face in Gujarat who line up behind. We have three or five or six top leaders in Gujarat who are working together as a team. It's not about individuals anymore. Look at in Gujarat how nervous the BJP is. They're showering projects and announcing thousands of crores of money one week before the elections. That shows that they're not as confident as they want to be seen to be. Right, and I think if the BJP in Gujarat was so confident, they would have had the elections together, no, for Himachal and Gujarat. And now to put the blame on EC is unfair. And the Prime Minister and ministers are going there announcing today. Where were they for 20 years? Announcing, you're, you're, announcing a thousand crore project today on the eve of the polls is an eyewash because you've there for 20 years. What is the need of announcing projects one week before the poll date? Let me put it like this: You're extremely confident that you're going to win Gujarat. You didn't share that confidence when you were talking about Himachal. Himachal, you said, was a state that you perhaps. Without saying you so, focused we're ready on, to you give focused away. on Himachal for 30 seconds and for 5 minutes talk about Gujarat. But let me put it like I am, this. I am confident about both states and I think we can win Himachal and Even Gujarat. though in Himachal you have a chief minister who faces and perhaps even now has charges of corruption against him. If you see in the last two years, Karan, is there any opposition leader who has not been uh, served notice by the income tax, by the ED, by the CBI? You pick a leader who is non-BJP. for the course. You pick a non-BJP leader who is of any substance. He or she has been hounded by the central government agencies for some reason or the other. I think it's become, you know, an everyday occurrence that anybody who is not in the BJP. Let me ask you a question. That, no, let me ask, ask you a question. The Vyapam scam happened in, in uh, Madhya Pradesh. Has the Chief Minister of uh, Madhya Pradesh been asked one question by any agency? The Lalit Modi scandal happened in Rajasthan. Has the AD or CBI asked the Chief Minister of Rajasthan I, any question? I so they're working with a bias. I accept as a politician that this is an answer that will convince you. I'm not going to do what anchors do, which is to repeat the number of scams and scandals that Congress <coughs> governments have faced, whether at the center or the state, because this is not a question of what, what about it. I want to put something. Should the law not be even for everybody? Me, let me put something. Should the law me. not be same for everybody? It should be, and I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about what would happen if you should end up losing both Himachal and Gujarat. You'll then be left with just five states: Punjab, Karnataka, Meghalaya, Mizoram, Pondicherry. Pondicherry is not even a full state. On top of that, you have barely 44, 45 MPs in the Lok Sabha. On top of that, you have a leader which may be unfairly, but is still considered Papu. It would take a miracle. Okay, can I it would something? take a I miracle take for Congress I to current, win I mean, in 2019. I am taking exception to the fact that you keep referring to Rahul Gandhi as the word that you use. If that's the word you want to describe with, then you tell him all the reason that you personally believe in it. Either you quote someone who's saying it or you say that I've heard this from someone. But you knew as an interviewer keep uh, referring to Mr. Gandhi with that name. I take objection to that, first of all. I'm Second referring all, to him by that name names, for two reasons. There are many for names that I can say for BJP leaders. Because social media calls him Papu then say that. Then say that. But why do I need to say it? it? You know it and you I know it. Does you know Karan Thapar think like that? No, no, it doesn't matter. I can think of five names that people talk about Mr. Modi, Mr. Shah. I will never use those words because that's not what we do. But if you want to do it on a personal level, then you say that that's what I think. Or else you quote some leader who said it. But I said so. I no, said you, I said quite clearly the country calls Papu. Not the entire country, but vast majority of the country. You want to have a referendum on Papu? You want to do a referendum? 
referendum the whole country no, obviously not so you are you representing the whole country but, then but tell me something you are bristling at this is because it because, I feel is it because is it because it's you're unfair falling into or, the trap or, or is it because it, it you're falling into nerve. the trap it doesn't not touch at enough. all i take offense because i think you're falling into the same but trap come back to my that question. you should not be falling into because that's what mr gandhi said the bjp has hired an army of people who create whatsapp messages who do something on social media to create a very very negative and perhaps uh, and the task that is so difficult is to change the negative media they created believe me the, it, last 6 months social media by the way is is a sword with two edges huh it cuts both ways at the moment you're and absolutely you'll see what right happens. that rahul is using humor effectively i've written about it in the business standard and he's doing it effectively the problem is whether he can do it for long enough and effectively enough to change an image that has been around now for 5 6 years but leave that aside my key question was this if you end up losing himachal and gujarat with just 44 seats and a leader about whom there are enormous questions is it not a miracle that you need to win the national election in 2019 let me ask you what if you win gujarat what happens then what what kind of miracle do you expect the bjp to do never should one believe that they will win for all so gujarat is critical to 219 without Obviously, gujarat under your belt 219 is not a reality you can't write off anyone and you can't say someone will will win forever i am confident because the bjp has not performed in gujarat the propaganda is now falling apart we have a very strong base we worked really hard and mr gandhi is getting huge traction in gujarat and it's the home state of both the bjp president and the prime minister my last question clearly it has it has significance both for congress and bjp my last question any good politician in your position is bound to sound confident if he's going to win gujarat are you really confident or is this something that you just have to say you see the last four elections current Congress party has polled about 40% votes so it's not that the congress party is we are in bad shape let's say in bihar and up which i accept but in gujarat there's a huge congress vote bank and today the anti bjp votes are getting consolidated it's simple arithmetic i don't care about opinion poll ahmed patel won the, the rajya sabha by the skin of his teeth and only because two other people had to be ruled out but mlas don't represent people right they have been elected to the so assembly so the people are with you i think the voters are with us and they've seen through the false promises of the bjp and they'll vote for the congress this time such a pilot a pleasure talking to you thank you